Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. I'm continuing my look at the Sicilian Kalashnikov, looking at some recent games. And uh, we've got another game here by Parham Marsudlu from Iran, former world junior champion, an incredible talent. And he is a great exponent of the Sicilian Kalashnikov. And there you go, that's the Kalashnikov. This was played in the World Blitz Championship recently, uh, just about a week ago. And in the last game, we looked at C4, which is this Marozzi bind position, which is a very popular response to uh, the Kalashnikov. But in this game, white plays in a, in a very positional way, which is actually quite common. So white is Jan Klimkowski. He's a Polish FM. He's rated way below Marksudlu. Uh, but this is a blitz game and anything could happen. So here, Klimkowski has played the knight back to c3. Now, I've talked about this before, but very often that knight on b5 has to go round the houses to get back to a decent position. So this way, Klimkowski takes a very practical approach. He drops it back immediately and he wants to try and get some control over the d5 square, which he now does by playing bishop g5. And then he exchanges off bishop for knight and puts the knight on d5. Now this kind of idea with this exchange on f6 is very, very common. White plays in this straightforward way, just occupying the outpost. And that's why I thought it'd be interesting to look at this game because you know, black strategy here is so typical. So bishop g5, there we go. This very common and typical maneuver in the clashing of that bishop doesn't look very well placed on f6. Once it comes to g5, then it looks down that diagonal and that is a beautiful piece. Um, and, and it's one of the reasons that I, I really like playing the Kalashnikov is that you know very often that bishop turns into a, a superstar. Now white plays bishop d3. I think that's a slightly odd placement for the bishop. Uh, I mean, this isn't a very common line, but um, typically white would play the bishop to c4. But bishop d3 does at least support the e4 pawn and the c2 pawn, which can be vulnerable, actually. Castles, castles, and now bishop e6. So often that's where the bishop should end up in this variation. And now there's already a kind of positional threat for black. Next to exchange off bishop for knight and drop the knight back to e7. Um, okay, let me just make a random move and show that. And then black is ready with this beautiful kingside pawn majority. Um, and, and white's pawn majority on the queen side is going nowhere, but this is really mobile. It's just one of those little positional tricks that uh, you sometimes manage to get in. So that's why knight c3 is played. Support the knight here. a6. So black would like to expand on the queen side. And so that induces a4. But as we'll see, that pawn can actually be quite weak. Rook c8, that's where the rook belongs in the Sicilian on the semi-open file. King h1. Aha! Now, that is an indication that white has this push in mind. Let's see what happens. So g6. So g6 is a useful move. It could be that just the king comes up here. Uh, it could be that the pawn supports the push to f5. But white gets his push in first, f4. And this is such a common push in for white in the Sicilian, and you see, also see it in the Kalashnikov. But it's a move that I like to see when I'm playing with black. First of all, we exchange. 
And, well, let's just deal with the drawbacks of this move. Basically, now that black has exchanged here, then that knight finds a wonderful square on e5, blockading the e-pawn. Um, I mean, it could be played straight away. In fact, what Masulu does first is ex exchange off that knight. I mean, that knight does have some activity on f4, so why not simplify the position? And then he puts his knight on e5. So you can see it just kind of reaching over into white's position. It's a beautiful piece, and that knight cannot be touched. I have to say that blacks, both blacks minor pieces, actually, are beautifully placed here far better than white. So you can see that knight not doing much here, uh, doesn't want to go into d5 because black would just exchange and get this wonderful kingside pawn majority. That is just a huge positional advantage for black. So already I think black is doing pretty well. The only thing is, well, I've talked about the, the negative side to advancing the, this f pawn. On the positive side for white, the f file does open. You know, white does have a little bit of activity on the king side. Queen d2, which black has to be aware of. But at the moment, well, there's 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 nothing doing. Queen b6. So now black starts to attack the queen side, and and this is so common. In combination with the rook, it means that yeah, there's always pressure here. And and if b3, then that knight. Well, its support has been undermined, and this is, I think that's just a winning move, isn't it? Here, pin and win. So, therefore, white has to play rook b1. That pawn on b2 is actually a very important pawn, supporting the knight on c3. So, white is reduced to defending it with a rook, not an active square. Queen b4, yep, very common. I mentioned earlier that pawn is very often weak in these kind of positions. So you can see that black is taking the initiative on the queen side and, and is rather you know, tying down white's pieces. So white feels the need to attack. White needs to distract black. And this is where you have to be switched on, of course. Suddenly there's a big uh, threat of queen h6, but black can deal with that very easily. Pawn to f6. So it means if queen h6, then the rook just nudges up to defend that pawn. There's actually no danger at all. These pieces can't get into play. And actually, there's now a threat of rook takes knight. Once again, pin and win. So black is solid on the king side. So f6 has just been played. The rook came back to f4. So I suppose white can at least console himself with the fact that this pawn has advanced and that can now be attacked but actually it's very easy to defend so rook f7 super solid the rook comes back i mean white actually can't do very much here king g7 see absolutely solid nice defensive setup and those pieces also looking really good so Basically, white's attack with f4 has come to nothing, and this knight stands beautifully. h3, yeah, an indication that white isn't doing much. And here, black can actually win a pawn, just by playing bishop d7. And bishop takes pawn. There's nothing doing. Uh, knight d5 is, is not going to help at all. Um, well, you know, one could exchange here for starters. And can we get away with taking the knight b6? Well, exchanging queens is, is just good, actually. Um, even if it's not possible to take that, then, uh, yeah, just bring the bishop back here or, or bishop c6. It's, it's, it's a wonderful position for black, positionally. So, yeah, but in a blitz game, maybe such a little retreat, uh, you, it's not a, a natural move. You're spotted in a classical game, but in, in blitz chess, you want to keep your active pieces. You want to keep the bishop on e6 looking at d5, so covering the knight. So queen d4 was played by Mark Sudlu. Well, it looks pretty good. The queen is nice and active there. 
Rook f1, doubling on the f-file, but that's no problem. Queen came back to b6. Okay, he thought better of his adventure and just pops the queen back here, looking at b2 again. So he wants to send the rook back to b1 and then, then reset and think again. Oh, in fact, that's, I've just spotted it. In fact, after rook b1, that's really tricky. He can now play rook takes knight. That's his trick. I've only just twigged it. Because if pawn takes, then queen takes rook. And if queen takes, then the rook can be taken on f2. Very tricky. That's why he played queen b6. Nice touch. So the knight came back to d1. A miserable retreat. So the pawn is now covered. And here, I think, is the critical moment in the blitz game. What Mark Sudlu does now is not a blunder, but I think it was an impractical choice for a blitz game. I think black has a number of decent continuations here. Um, for example, d5. Liberation station after pawn takes, bishop takes. That bishop now points down to that pawn on g2. Um, I mean, here's just a simple tactic. If, if white tries to win a pawn with bishop takes and queen takes, then actually you can take with check and then take here and you've destroyed white's king position. Um, if knight e3, well, you could just preserve that bishop. That's pretty nice. Come just drop back here. Or even rook d8, because after knight takes, you can see there's very nice pressure here. So which minor piece is better, the knight or the bishop? But of course, if we can just exchange off and damage white's pawns, that's also a plus. So in this position, I like d5. It's that typical liberating move in the Kalashnikov. That's one good continuation that I think would keep control as well. Another good continuation, knight c4. If that's exchanged off, then the rook hits both pawns. If the queen retreats, well, let's go back to d4 with the queen. I mean, this looks like a really attractive position. Maybe then the knight will spin back to e5 to look at these pieces. You can see black has control there. That's what it's all about in blitz. But instead, Marsubu played bishop c4. And I mean, I understand what he's trying to do. He wants to somehow, you know, weaken squares on the c file. But, and, and also weaken these pawns as well. But after this, knight e3, suddenly it's getting messy. Black is not worse here at all. But with this knight sort of looking at d5 and f6, in that case a little bit vulnerable, now it's it's a bit out of control. It's not what you need in a blitz game. So yeah, if rook takes, then the knight would come to d5 hitting the queen and hitting here. So rook d4. And he played the knight back to d7. Well, already you see that exchange has had consequences. Dian Knight has had to retreat from its wonderful, wonderful position on e5 to protect the pawn on f6. I repeat, black is not worse, but it's kind of irritating to have to retreat. And suddenly white is active. That's what you need in the blitz game. f5. Uh, well, you know, this is absolutely critical now. Uh, there's a pin here that undermines the knight, but it does expose the king. And in fact, if if white can stir things up with b4 and, and put the queen on a worse square, that is a good move. Instead, white plays c3. And now this is good for black. Uh, rook takes pawn is a good move, because if queen takes, you don't take, which would allow rook takes, but you can throw in that one. And the end game is obviously very good for black. And... Well, black is just a lot better there. But instead, rook takes a4. It's still playable, but you can see that this rook is suddenly looks a bit weird. It's a strange position now. Black has to be very, very careful. 
and here the queen should drop back to g3 and and yeah it's annoying for black that the king is now exposed it's it's a bit of a mess but white played f6 oh it's the rough and tumble of blitz uh, it's not a good move but black has to find this the queen is attacked the queen drops back and then you take there and black is two pawns up and that's pretty safe Instead, Maksudlu blundered. He played queen takes f6, rook takes, and that just wins material. Rook takes, and rook takes, rook check. And here Maksudlu resigned. White is just a whole rook up. Well, an unfortunate end for the Kalashnikov, but I think that's, for me, that's a very instructive game. It's instructive how this typical move f4 actually gives black... A very nice positional advantage with that knight on e5. And then this position, I think, is also worth learning from as well. That even though black has this positional advantage, it can go wrong if you exchange pieces like bishop c4. Not a bad move, but I think an impractical move. And instead, yeah, knight c4 or d5. A much stronger move, keeping that control in the position. Well, I hope you gained something from that anyway. We can't always see wins with the Kalashnikov, but but still, um, it was a good position for Black, actually. Thanks for watching.